Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking through level 2 weapons. So we're going to go through all the traders and look at all the guns that are available to us here and I'm going to tell you which are good and some considerations about each one. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet and if you're thinking about getting one, it could now turn into a brand new Ford Bronco. Let me show you how. Ridge has partnered up with Hennessy, the high performance automotive customizer and you can enter for free now on the website for a chance to win this insane SUV or $75,000 in cash if you prefer. Anybody can enter, you get one extra bonus entry for every $1 spent on the Ridge website and the Hennessy custom products can come with up to 1000 bonus entries as well. If you use my link ridge.com forward slash gigaridge you'll get 10 free entries at the checkout too and if you use my code gigaridge you'll get 10% off as well. Now I've been using the Ridge wallet and the key case for a while and I absolutely love mine. It holds up to 12 cards as well as cash on the money clip on this version and on the cash strap as you can see on this version and it has loads of different styles available. The key case securely holds one to six keys and I've streamlined mine down to just two which stops them from jingling around all the time or poking holes in my pockets like used to happen with my old key ring. The Ridge team are so confident that you'll be converted that they have a 99 day test drive period after which you can get your money back if you don't love it and a lifetime warranty if you do. So if you're on the fence now is the best time to get one at ridge.com forward slash gigaridge to join the 80,000 strong five star rated proud owners of the Ridge wallet. So let's start with Prapor and the SVT which is basically the first one that comes up. This is the new gun in the game that has caused a big stir because it is basically a cheap and budget version of the SVD. It's a little bit like the SVD had a baby with the Vepa Hunter and it fires the biggest cartridge that's easily accessible in the game, 762 by 54 r Now, the reason why people think that this is kind of busted is if you compare this to other guns that are similar, something like the Vepa Hunter itself has about 330 recoil, the SVD base has about 150 recoil, and the SVT has about 96 recoil base. So as you can see, just thinking about that for one second, that's clearly much, much better than the other equivalent guns. And this fires one of the most powerful cartridges in the game. So it does seem a little bit broken. It is currently 56k. Now, it has gone up in price. This was 46,000 or something, so they've increased it by about 10k already. But this gun is still extremely good. I personally am not that good with it because the downside that you have is the ergonomics is not that great and it only takes this scope. So it takes this scope here, which is the PU scope from the Mosin. There's nothing else that you could do with this. There is no other rail that it comes with. What people have been doing is they've been taking it on and off in raid. So it is able to be removed, which is good. And so you can take it off and then you use the irons instead. So you take it off, put it in your, co your container or just your bag or something. You use the irons on the gun for close range and then you stick it back on when you're trying to shoot far away. If you try to lean with this, you're going to get a lot of scope blacking out at the sides because the PU scope is pretty bad. But for three and a half times and the price of this gun, lots of people are using it right now because the ammo is extremely plentiful and it's it's very good in general. Next, we're going to move on to the shrimp. I find that this one is slightly tricky because the ammo is a little bit hard to get access to at the moment. This can be good later when you can get access to BT, but right now I don't really like it. The only thing I'm really using the shrimp for is you can barter it for a kite. Kite is typically under 10k on the flea market and what you can do is you can barter for the shrimp pistol here with Prapo and then you can sell it back to Skier for 10,000 rubles. This also helps you get your money spent which is what I'm doing up with him. I've already done this once actually which is the reason why I can't buy anymore. So every every time Prapo resets I tend to buy two kites, I buy two shrimps, I sell them back to Skier and we slowly get our money up that way. The APS pistol, it's automatic. You get 20 rounds in each magazine. It's got 387 recoil. You can actually put a stock on this. I can't remember exactly what level traders that is. That takes the recoil down to only 240 compared to what it was before. It is Prapple 2. Okay, so you could get it to Prapple 2 for 7,000. If you're gonna run this pistol, probably worth it. It's more of a joke, more for a meme. I don't see people running this that often unless they're running it alongside a sniper. Maybe it's good to run with the SVT. I don't know, um, it's kind of up to you. Now I'm going to bundle the AK-74N, the AKS-74N, the AK-74, 74M and the Plum variant of the 74s all kind of together. I don't really rate these longer versions of the AKs these days, partly because when you're modding them, the most available handguard, which allows you to really do anything, is the AK-100. But this is locked behind Gunsmith these days, so you can get access to this after you've done a certain number of Gunsmith tasks, but right at the beginning you can't get access to it. And outside of that, it's actually very difficult to get decent handguards for this early on. You can get something like the tracks, which is a mechanic, but I don't really see the, the point. There's, you don't get that much. There's 68 recoil to start with. 
you stick the tracks on and put a kind of like any old grip on it, it doesn't really matter, say this one. It goes down to 63. The butt pad is locked behind really high gunsmith, actually. It's really, really fast, so I can't even buy this yet. I've only done the first couple, to be fair. But it makes it very difficult to actually use. And again, the muzzle brakes, you can't get access to many of them either. I think you might be able to get the DTK one at Skier 2, so you can put that on. That gives you down to 60, but... Again, I just don't think it's really that good. The weapons that I do really, really like are the 74Us, which are the shorty versions. These ones are at Prepper 1. If you take the AKS 74U and you put on the handguard that you're allowed to with that and put on something like the RK4, which you can get from Skier, you can see we're basically at the same recall as the long versions, except with way more ergonomics. And we haven't even changed the front over. If we change the DTK, we've now actually got better recall than the 74, which is very weird. Um, it, this came about from a balancing change about six months ago and the recalls of the 74 Scott got decreased but this makes them actually I think superior a lot of the times to the long version I know you could put the Bastion on the long versions and so there's other optics that you can put on that you can't put on the U but I think there are better weapons to use than, than these in my opinion I mean you can try them if you want but I've kind of avoided them for the time being the AKM, obviously you need it for Punisher, so this is going to be a well-used rifle. With PS rounds, which you can then buy at Prep World 2, it's an you know, important purchase price here. The PS round is very, very good and will bust through Class 4 armor. After the first shot, it's not an instant pen straight away, but it does make the AKM pretty good and it's on full auto. Now, we can use the same philosophy as with the 74s. Again, there's a lot of recoil on these, which is one reason why I don't really like them that much, but we put on exactly the same set of mods that we did on the 74U just to make it kind of comparable. The RK4 will put on one of these. I think that this one takes the Dynacomp instead of Mechanic 2, so you need to be level 20 for that. And then if we take off this and put the Bastion on instead to do the full build, that gets you to 82 vertical recoil. So it's still higher than a stock AK-74 or an AK-74 you but clearly this fires a much bigger bullet so you can fire this on semi as well as pumping it into somebody at close range and it should do the trick because it does a lot more damage and a lot more pen next up we've got the apb pistol this is the same but with a suppressor on it so we don't really need to speak about that in particular and the keta b which is moved up to prep or two for cash 36k for a suppressed gun is actually pretty good and at this level you can now buy the 30 round magazines which is very useful with the 20s only the Kedder is all right but with the 30s it kind of becomes a bit of a powerhouse the recoil on this is fairly low actually at 38 so you can dominate people with this in cqb it's really good in factory and other cqb situations so if you can keep yourself around corners and inside buildings this can be a really solid choice i see lots of people killing loads of pmcs with this uh, you just have to make sure you don't get caught out at range the sv98 barter is generally not really worth it um i think you're probably better off just picking the most in to be honest because it's in cash but if you want an sv98 there's one here if we skip ahead to jaeger there is actually a, a nice version later on on jaeger 3 can't get access to that straight away but if you could use the sv98 i think you probably should look towards using this one rather than the stock standard version but if you want it it's there i mean it's for the polish cigarettes and marlboros which are not particularly sought after so it probably costs you about 50k the reason why people normally end up buying this is because they try to do peacekeepers task of dropping it off on the pier and they keep dying that's usually the reason why people buy this sp98 so yeah if you want to go sniping the most in sniper is a decent choice you can actually buy the infantry versions if you don't want to put a scope on these are 10k cheaper down at prep or one so the reason why you'd want to use the most in sniper is because this is the one that has the the mount at the side and you can either put the the Kuchatov thing on there or you can at the front there's this mosin 3 rail or the mosin mng rail which you could put something else on like an ekp if you wanted to up there and if you use the three rail you could put something a bit bigger um any of the regular scopes on you could even put something on like a night force 30 mil mount if you really were feeling crazy and put something like actually good in there usually what people would stick on I guess something like an LCAM, because that's a little bit more accessible early. Um, then you could use that with the Mosin. If you want to use it for, say, Tarkov Shoot or something, you don't really like the VPO. So next up, we have Skier. Skier's weapons at level 2 are quite limited. You have the ADAR. You can now buy this in cash. You can actually put together an ADAR purely from the traders. You could probably put this one purely from the traders if you go find parts. You can build, yeah, build this one completely up from the traders in the base for 52k. So it's not like it was inaccessible beforehand. And now you can buy it for 45 if you want, which is very slightly cheaper than doing it yourself. You can also get the MCX. I don't recommend doing this. GPXs are really expensive early on. The MCX doesn't really get any good ammo. They moved for M856A1 back to trader level 2, but they didn't move M62, which is the equivalent for 300 blackout. They didn't move that back to trader's level 2, so you're stuck with the lower grade one, which is basically the same as M855. So if you're thinking about using the MCX, I think you should probably wait until a little bit later when you have M62 or the new round CBJ, which is kind of like the 300 blackout's equivalent of M855A1. 
before you start using this gun because otherwise you're probably going to have more success just using a 5.56 weapon and using 5.6A1 from Peacekeeper because the pen is quite different. It's 37 pen for 5.6 and it's only 30 pen for the best round that you can get for the MCX at this moment. Skier also sells the two variants of the AK-545. This is kind of interesting because you can't actually get access to the PWS CQB from Skier until loyalty level 3, but he sells it with the gun, which is quite intriguing on the short version. These two both have pretty low recoil. They come with 48. I mean, this one's got the muzzle brake on it, so that's the reason. The other one comes at 53 as standard, which, as you can see, is about 10 better than the automatic version of the AKs. And they've got a lot of ergo as well. Like the short one starts at 77, the long one starts at 76. These two things also have really good MOA. The problem that I find with 545 is that typically, the, because the damage is quite a bit lower than even on something like 556 against 56A1, for example, the ammo kind of wants you to use it close range, but the gun wants to be used at long range. So those two things clash a little bit. But if you're a headshot machine and you're looking to snipe some people out with it, it can actually be pretty good. The velocity is pretty decent, 904 meters per second. So you can snag some nasty kills with it. Just don't expect yourself to be penning through class three and class four at long distances, especially with the lower grade bullets like PP, because after the penetration drop and the damage drop and the damage drop off through armor, you may actually miss headshots, even if you do hit them and even if it pens, which can be a bit frustrating. Next, we have the RFB. I was predicting that the RFB was going to be an incredible weapon this wipe and that loads of people were going to be using it. But unfortunately, what I had overlooked was the SVT on Prapor, which is actually more expensive. The RFB is really, really cheap and it is still pretty good, but the SVT is just that much better because the M80 round is still locked behind Peacekeeper 4. So the best that you can do is BCP FMJ, which isn't terrible, but it's got a pen of 35. So it's about the same as 762 PS. But the fact that you could put LPS into the SVT means that that weapon is probably going to be superior. However, there are not that many things you can do with gas analyzers. So these trade for about 16K on the fleet. If you can get them under 15, which sometimes they pop up for under that, you can basically buy the RFB and sell it back to Skier for the same amount of money, pretty much just making rep for free. So if you do want to pick up this gun, it is actually okay. I think it's probably decent with the BCP FMJ ammo, even still, because it does a lot of damage. And unlike the SVT, you can put whatever optic you want onto this thing. You can suppress it. You can put a foregrip on it. And the ergo is actually quite good. You've got big mags, 20 round magazines, unlike the SVT, which only has 10s. So there are advantages to the RFB. And for 30K for the base gun, like 30, 32K, it's really quite affordable. It's a lot cheaper than it used to be. So maybe give it a go if you'd like the DMR playstyle. Glock 19X, it's another Glock. It's, I think, compatible with a few different types of magazines. This one comes with a 19 rounder by default. If you like Glocks, you'll probably like this as well. I don't think there's much more to say about this. Next is the STM. This one is normally preferred by people who like pain. This is like the two AK SAG guns, except kind of on crack. The MOA isn't actually that good on this thing, but the ergonomics is really high. The recoil is super low. I think the STM is one of those weapons you can get to one of the lowest recoils in the game if you mod it out fully. Why you would for 9mm, I'm not really sure. But 9mm doesn't really fly very well. The pen is very bad, so it takes a special kind of person to want to use the STM. But it can be good if you just hit them in the head, like most guns in the game. The one thing that I would note about the STM is that sometimes you can find them cheap on the fleet. Not at the moment, I don't think, but sometimes you can. And the stock on this gun is one of the highest ergonomic stocks in the game, which can actually be useful for certain things. If you want to boost ergo, I did. I was using an equivalent of this on a particular build at one point. I think I've used it for Gunsmith before. So it's worth bearing in mind that the GL Core buttstock here is really, really high ergonomics because you can't buy this until loyalty level three skier. And it is expensive-ish on the flea market. So sometimes it is actually just better to buy an STM and sell the gun back, leaving the stock in your capable hands. Right, moving on to Peacekeeper. This is where I have spent a lot of my time this wipe so far. The M4 I don't think is necessarily worth buying from here. I've actually just done a build guide on the M4 so you can go and watch that here if you want to. I'll put it up in a card. But some of the other weapons here are actually decent. His pistols for the Plague Mask, the USP Tactical uh, which is the one that actually has a threaded barrel so you can actually attach a suppressor to it and the M45A1 which is basically a pimped up 1911. These are all decent guns, and if you like pistols and you want to use them in a larger caliber, then it can be decent. The 5.7 is probably the most rough one at the moment, like match ACP is decent for these two, but for the 5.7 you can't get the good rounds until later, so that's a little tricky. They've also nerfed Subsonic, so that's not as good anymore. You now have to use L191 if you're not going to use SS190, which is the top round for this particular weapon. But the unfortunate thing about this is that it means that it is now impossible 
to head tap somebody wearing a class four helmet using the five seven and any of the ammo. You used to be able to do it 50% of the time using subsonic because of the way that the penetration and the damage drop off worked. I did a whole video about that as well last wipe, which you could check out if you're interested, but SB193 used to go through, SS190 didn't because the damage was too low, but now that the penetrations have been nerfed on these things and the next best one is 33 pen at L191, you now don't stand a chance of head tapping anybody with a class 4 helmet. So ULAX now make you invulnerable to 5.7 pistols, so long as you uh, don't get hit in the face. So the proper guns, the G36C, I have really enjoyed this weapon. I think this is a really good middle ground for CQB. It's cheaper than the M4 and it comes with a rail on the top already, a rail on the bottom for four grips. You can put a suppressor on the end relatively easily because there's so many to choose from in 556. Again, I did another video about this, my 556 build video from a couple of days ago. So go and check that out if you want to. You could put rail on the side. So it's very modular. This thing got a big buff last white, but it was too late. So people didn't really use it. And you could only buy the longer versions at the lower levels of Peacekeeper. So the C was only available later on. The iconic C variant was only available later on. And so people were lumbered with the, the long variant of the G36, which felt like a log to try and move around. Plus it had this bipod on the front, which was the only thing you could do to try and increase the recoil and ergonomics on it. And it just felt unwieldy. Since then, the C has come to Peacekeeper, which already has better ergo and the gun as a whole got about 11 ergonomics added to every single variant it's just added to its base stats again it was too late so people didn't realize at that point but now that we've had both the ergo buff and we've also had the g36c move down to peacekeeper and we've had the various recoil buffs across the game as well to both horizontal and vertical recoil this now feels pretty usable you do still have to pull down it's a little bit like the m4 like that it's not a laser beam like the mdr or the scar which does also decrease its full auto distance that you're comfortable to fire over but in cqb i would much rather have a g36c than i would have an mdr or a scar and it's actually okay at distance it's not that bad it's better than the m4 because of the slower fire rate it's 750 rather than 800 and it's kind of a middle ground between the two and at 462 dollars it's also relatively cheap next we have the org this is a no from me you can't do anything to it if you like this scope that it comes with it's pretty nasty compared to some of the others that we have in the game then maybe you can use it and it is fairly cheap for the fact you get 45 vertical recoil at 715 rpm should make it quite controllable but you can't put a laser on it you can't put your own scopes on it until peacekeeper 3 because you can't replace the upper until then so for now it's a no from me m1a I don't see any point in using the M1A at this point when the SVT and the RFB both exist. The M1A gets good later on when you can mod it because it gets to some of the lowest recalls across the entire game. But at this point, it's just not worth using this basic gun right now. It has the same problems as the RFB does in terms of ammunition, except it just isn't as good. So I think avoid this one for the time being. Wait till you have mechanic at later levels so you can get the SAS build and then you can really make the most of this gun. The MPX. This is basically unused. Again, I think this is probably just too expensive for what it is. The recoil is hurt by the fact that the fire rate is a little bit higher than that on the MP5. It's got 33 recoil, which is pretty decent. And the silenced equivalent has 24, which again is quite good. But the MP5 SD is cheaper and has 25 vertical recoil. I just think I would rather use the MP5 SD in general. You don't really need more than 800 RPM in this gun. And the MPX just feels kind of weird. It's something to do with the way that the camera recoil interacts with the recoil. It just feels kind of off. And I think the MP5 SD is good. It's much more fun than the MPX, in my opinion. But the issue is, is that it's still 9mm, so you still have to hit them in the face. I wish that they would almost decrease the recoil on these even further, because nobody ever, ever, ever uses these low recoil 9mm guns. And to make them like actual proper laser beams, so that you, but you still have to hit them in the face, would probably balance out the calibre, right? The best ammo that you can have for this is 7M31, which is craft only, and it's still not that good. It's decent, but it's not that good, especially against people with class 5 armour. You're not going to be killing them with thorax shots unless they literally just let you shoot them and don't return fire. So you're at a big disadvantage when using these. So I think that the recoil could come down, especially on the first couple of shots, because that's really what hurts these weapons. Next, we have the P90. This is actually quite a good gun. This one, this variant, used to not have the top rail on it, used to not be able to get this really early. But now that you can, you can put actual sights on it. You're not just lumbered and stuck with the P90 top sight, because the default one that comes with the P90 is really, really bad. But this has modules on the side for putting lasers. It's got the long barrel, which makes it have quite actually a decent muzzle velocity. It's got 900 RPM fire rate, so it's actually really good. Like, th this is decent. The big problem that you're going to face, similar with the 5.7 pistol, is that the bullets that you can buy at this tier are just not that great. If you go to ammo, the best that you can get is these SS197SR and 198LF. And if we go to look at those, it's 70 damage and 17 pen. 
62 damage and 27 pence. So they're very lackluster. They're class 3 armor rated bullets, basically, which it just doesn't really cut it in the class 4 meta. I think, again, wait until you can get something slightly better for this, at least L191 from Peacekeeper 3. Then with 33 pen, you might be able to make it work, but, you know, it fires the 50 round mag, so that's the big advantage for the P90. You can get away with it having slightly less damage and less pen because you've got so many chances to hit them in the face. And with 34 recoil, it's a bit of a laser beam. So some people make it work regardless, but yeah, if you don't hit them in the head, it can be a bit tricky. You can hit them seven, eight times and they not die, which can be a bit frustrating. I don't think I mentioned actually about the military cable, about how this is actually really cheap. So buying that gun right now, if I just bought it straight away, it would be 56k to buy the P90, which for what you get here is really cheap. It's because of the ammo is why it's so cheap. Next up, we have the UMP. This got nerfed really hard after everybody used it for two wipes in a row, and now it is very average. I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad, but the vertical recoil is not that good. The horizontal recoil is not that good. The mag capacity is not that good. It does come with rails automatically, which is fine. It can be suppressed, but it's quite expensive. It's a very much an all-rounder gun. The fire rate is low, so it suffers against other SMGs in CQB. The recoil is not that controllable, so it suffers at long range when firing on full auto. And the rounds are very, very slow because it's 0.45, 332 meters per second. So long range shooting is actually very difficult. There's a lot of bullet drop and there's a, just a long time before the rounds actually get to your target. So it's a bit of an all rounder. It can work. I did use it this wipe so far and it was OK. Like it's fine, but it's just it's very, very general. It's kind of like, you know, default SMG number one. Like it's fine. It works in most situations, but against a specialist, it's going to be outclassed in kind of every other scenario, if that makes sense. Right, onto Mechanic. I don't know how long we're going to spend on Mechanic because he has lots of various random barters, but I know this isn't a gun. Sometimes these fuses go really cheaply. Sometimes this is the best way to get a grenade. 7,000 for a grenade, I think it's cheaper than most of the other ways to get it. And sometimes those go down. I, I When I looked one time, they were down like 4,000 rubles or something. So I actually, rather than selling my fuses, I actually bought more fuses and did a load of these VOG 17 barters. So this is just one to look out for. Can be one of the cheapest ways to get a nade in the game early. The OP SKS for three weapons parts is okay. If you like the SKS, it's not too bad. A 20k, I think it's probably overpriced, but sometimes they come down a little bit lower than that. It's a decent weapon. You've got the dovetail mount on here because it is the OP version, which is good. And it's got high ergonomics, so it could take a suppressor and not get damaged too much. The SKS is all right. I tend to not use it after the early wipe, but if you like it, then this is not a terrible option. My right, mechanic at level two, he's got four lowers. He's got an M4 lower, a SCAR lower, an AK-74N lower, and a VPO-209 lower. These are useful if you're replacing a gun that got damaged and the max durability is now too low. You could swap all the parts over onto these lowers and that's very useful. The other thing that you can do is that you can build guns up completely from scratch so you don't have to buy a full weapon and then sell all of the stuff that you don't need back to the traders because you're basically taking a 50% haircut on those things unless it's one that's extremely good. Let's say you buy an AK-74N at full value but then you end up replacing the stock and the gas tube and the cover and all that stuff. You basically bought all of those parts at 100% but you sell them back at 50 and then you have to buy something else. So sometimes it's actually just cheaper to start with a basic weapon like this. You can do this with the SCAR. At level two, the TAN SCAR parts are actually all available. If you do the Mark 16 TAN, any pistol grip, doesn't really matter. We'll pick this one because that's my favorite. A TAN folding stock, a TAN rear stock section, a TAN cheek rest. The barrel I think you can buy is only the, the 10 inch, the small one the charging handle for it, and then the scar bottom. That's actually a workable scar. That actually will function. It's not red if you build that, and that costs you 68K. So you can make a scar for 68,000 rubles, and that's 100% durability. One of the biggest problems that I have with the scar on the fleet is that most of them come from rogues, most of the cheap ones at least, and to actually go and buy a real scar, we'll go quickly to the flea market now and just see. If you go to buy a tan scar, that's actually 100%. It is about 60k. So that one is cheaper than the one we were making ourselves. But sometimes it's a bit more expensive. There's only one there. There's one here at 70. So if you were to build this, this is actually cheaper to make on your own. You could also build M4s as well. That's how we built the M4 in that video that I mentioned previously. So next we have the M4A1 SOP mod. This is really good so long as pro kills are low in price. At about 70k, this thing is basically at fair value. You get loads of stuff on here that's really, really good. So it's worth keeping an eye out for this one because you get an LCAN, you get the NT4 suppressor. The other things that are decent are the butt pad for the MOE carbine series. The carbines are usually pretty cheap because they're found in raid, but the butt pads, people are always looking for them. So you see how expensive these are? Like if you, rather than buying one of these, you're better off actually just going to buy this SOP mod barter instead and taking off the butt pad and then selling the rest of the gun back. You'll get it for a lot cheaper than 66K doing it that way. 
This is a good base as well for an M4. If you did actually want to, to do that, we did show that in the build. You take off the little sights because we probably don't want these. And then you end up with something that's relatively decent. It'll end up about 50 ergo once you take these parts off and 49 recoil, which is, it's an okay base. It's also a shorty version too. So there's got the 260 mil barrel on it. And so you could use that for gunsmith if you wanted to. Right, next up the Org A1. I don't like this and it's probably even worse with the barter. So we're gonna move on to the M1 EBR, which is also terrible. This is always bad. The tapes cost way too much for this to ever make sense. This build is also not very good. You've either got the standard build, the EBR build, or the SAS build. The EBR build is the middle one, and it's just not very good. You can see in this configuration, it's 129 vertical recoil, which is not good for the M1A. And you can't really make it that much better, and the barter sucks. The next one we have is the Glock 17 barter for G phones and the PCB. This actually can be useful because it features this Osprey 9 suppressor on it. And sometimes these parts can actually be quite cheap. And sometimes the parts can actually be cheaper than what the traders will sell this back for. So keep an eye out for this one. This is actually pretty good. There's a whole bunch of other things here. Glock 17, USP, USP Elite, which they're similar to the ones that we already talked about. And, um, and the Glock 17 one here, although GP coins are a bit more expensive. So this one usually isn't worth it. But that Glock 17 one is actually worth looking out for, especially if you actually want one of these Ospreys um, and if the drills are expensive because yeah it's 26k to buy on the flea market but sometimes you can actually get it a little bit cheaper just by doing this particular barter. Of the last three the Mosin Sniper Obrez is a bit of a meme I do like the barter itself a Mosin Sniper Carbine a really long stock and give him a pack of six for his trouble and he'll make you a tiny little baby Mosin with a front rail on it which is pretty entertaining. Not really sure what the point of this is but it's quite funny I guess you could use this to do Tarkov Shooter Part 3 at close range and use this on factory because you're not going to get barrel stuffed by corners maybe also use it for headshots if you want to do that close range rather than long range for the new shooter one in heaven I don't know maybe there's an option there this p90 is kind of interesting it is a worth it now but the one thing to bear in mind is that the attenuator for the p90 gets very 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 expensive late wipe again no one's using the p90 at the moment so these suppressors are really cheap but they're 71,000 rubles with mechanic and later on in the wipe these will trade above the mechanic price so it can eventually make sense to do that particular barter for it, especially given that you also get a decent optic on top, the XPS 3.2, which usually goes for quite a bit of money. Even now it's 36K, so can be worthwhile, but it's usually one for much later on. Finally, we've got the AAC M700. I think this is really worth it. The suppressor is not that great. The optic nobody really wants to use because it's this horrible thing, the Leopold Mark IV, so we're probably just going to skip that. Finally, over onto Jaeger. What does he have on level two for us? He has the Vepa Hunter, completely surpassed by the RFB and the SVT. So we're going to ignore that. The Chepa Rhino Revolver. This actually isn't too bad once you get to level three Jaeger because of the bullets that you can buy. These Magnum JHPs are not actually that bad. They are quite powerful and they have decent pen. But until then, I don't think that this is really worth using. He also sells the Sword Off which is 10k. The special part about this is that this goes in your pistol slot. So you can have this on the quick draw. It is relatively weighty, 2.1 kilos, but you can quick draw a shotgun and just bam, bam into somebody's face. If you know, they're all up in your grill, maybe take it with a sniper or something. It's a bit of fun, but it could be interesting. At only 10,000 rubles, there's maybe something there. Now, the MP155, this thing has more ergonomics than the 153. I still think the 153 is superior. The reason why you'd want to use the 155 is I think if you want to suppress it, then you can use the fully kind of like space modded version of the 155 and all the parts come on Jaeger 3. So wait until then so you can mod this thing out fully. The 153 will always perform better because of its faster returning to the center time than the 155, but it has a lot more ergo on the 155, so it kind of depends on what you're looking to do. I personally prefer the 153, but some people love the 155 for its faster ADS speed. The Saiga is kind of similar, even cheaper, can take the drum magazine. So it's the largest capacity shotgun that we actually have. You can put those big drum mags on it. So that can be pretty good. And then obviously it's got replaceable magazines, so it's faster to load than having to hand load them all. Saiga 12 is pretty decent as well. It's one of the more accurate shotguns in general. So it can work with slugs too. You can make some pretty fun builds with this. Unfortunately, the Benelli is not really very good. The pump action mode is not fantastic. You can put this on semi-auto, but you can't really mod this thing at all. It's one thing that's missing a lot is all the mods, lasers, and anything like that. You can get an incredibly long magazine for this, 13 rounds, which ends up being longer than the barrel, which is pretty entertaining. But I think the, it's just surpassed by the 153 and the 155 at the moment until they give it some more support for some more mods. The final one that we have is the Remington Model 700. This is actually decent value. The beard oils trade on the flea market for 
sometimes down at about 30k and that can actually be worthwhile in terms of getting one because sometimes the m700s are quite a bit more expensive to buy a proper one and you can't actually get a 100 durability one from peacekeeper until a bit later right now it's 44k so it is still better to use the beard oil actually because these are 38 but often these trade a little bit lower than that and so it's actually better to do it that way rather than just buying one outright from the flea market which is kind of interesting if you're into the m700 at all or want to mod it and make it into something else so there's an awful lot of choice when it comes down to level two traders personally in my opinion it all comes down to the ammo so i think that i would either be running the 545 ak's most likely the short versions because they get to decent recoil without modding them like crazy Anything in the 556 category like the G36 or the M4 if you can mod them at a decent amount, even the MDR if it's cheaper on the flea, and then maybe something like the SVT if you want to go for the big boys, and maybe the RFB if you want to give it a try. But the SVT, it just seems to be such an outlier in terms of its price to performance that it's kind of a no-brainer to use it if you can get on with the PU scope. So those would be my three suggestions. A big thanks as always to all my patrons and have fun in your raids.